Hi, everybody. I'm Marilyn, CEO and founder of Cosmic Centaurs, and your host for today's um, session of the third edition of the annual Cosmic Conference, the conference all about employee experience, which we are exploring under every angle. We are just about to wrap up week two of the conference, but we still have an entire week with lives every day next week coming up. So it's not too late for you to sign up to some of our lives until October 21st. I'll be joined by academics, experts, managers, who will share their insights and experiences when it comes to designing great employee experiences. Um, all that information is available on our website. We'll share the conference website link uh, in the comments if you'd like to either rewatch some of these sessions or sign up for the upcoming ones. And as always, before we begin, show us some love, give this video a like, tag somebody who you think might find it interesting, and do ask us questions and share your thoughts and feedback on our discussion with Claudius um, here with us today. Claudius, thanks so much for joining me. My pleasure. I'm happy to be with you and uh, do this session. Me too. I mean, I have to say, uh, I've been a I've been a fangirl of the Spotify ways of working, and I, I think I should call it a groupie considering uh, this context um, for many, many, many years. And I've been following um, closely from an organizational strategy point of view, what you guys do. Of course, your work model is world renowned, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so I'm like, like giddy with excitement that you agreed to join me because I really I have so much admiration and fascination for the way you guys do things. But before we have that conversation, let me just do a quick introduction. Uh, Claudius is Spotify's managing director for the Middle East, North Africa and South Asia, excluding India. Since joining Spotify in 2017, he's been instrumental in planning and executing the audio streaming platform's entry into the region. He has 20 years of strategy, commercial and music industry experience covering various sectors including technology, digital media, and entertainment. And previously, he was vice president of digital and business development at Universal Music Group, where he helped develop the company's strategy in MENA and brought Dubai's operation and business to life. And today, as we, you know, spoiler alert, we're going to be talking about Spotify flexible model. Over the years, we've really witnessed um, Spotify leverage flexibility uh, across its organizational design, leverage its values and its culture to offer truly, I think, one of a kind employee experience uh, to its teams or squads. Um, we're going to talk about that work model and how it contributes to success and also truly how you're able to deliver this globally and at scale. I think that's what is incredibly impressive about um, Spotify's ability to do that. So. I'm going to kick off with our, you know, first uh, first question, Claudius. Let's get right to it. Um, I mean, Spotify really does have a, a very human centric view of flexibility. Um, you know, you have a, more recently in the work from home, not work from home debate. We've seen Spotify come out with a lot of optionality uh, and a lot of freedom for its people. But I think that flexibility has been ingrained in the company even since before the pandemic with your benefits and your work model. So share with us a little bit about what flexibility means for you guys. Right. I mean, uh, thanks. Thanks again for this massive introduction. Make me feel a bit old, but I, I'm I'm really happy to speak to you. Um, and I want to say that we have a lot of groupies for our work model and the entire employee experience here at Spotify. So. Um, our mission is really to unlock the potential of human creativity by giving a million creators the opportunity to live off their art and billions of fans to enjoy and being inspired by it. That's really our mission. But this also includes very much our employees um, and our future staff that will join Spotify. Um, and flexibility for us um, is not something that um, we, are, we are doing to attract more talent per se. It's something that fulfills a business purpose. And this is really the, where it comes from. And um, our founder, Daniel Eck, has started in the very early days to identify like what are the flexible ways of working. So you're absolutely right in saying it's not something that we started just because of the pandemic. However, I want to say it also has accelerated. Um, and uh, one of our values is really to innovate. And I think we're really innovating in that space. Um, so it is definitely a key success driver, this flexibility. But also it's not something that it get, like was designed once and then we're working on it. You find a lot of culture models and, and principles that companies set up. And, but flexibility is a very, very broad term. So for us, this is all an evolution. 
because we as humans, we evolve, right? And the ways we work, they evolve. Our preferences, they change and evolve as well as individuals. Um, so um, the freedom to work where, um, where we work best is really important. We believe spot, uh, work is not something that you go to. It's something that you do. Uh, and I think this is really essential. Um, we also, in, in an ideal world, we can have people working truly from any place. Uh, however, there's also restrictions to that. There is tax, there is health insurance. There's a lot of restrictions in there, but we're trying to like maximize really the flexibility um, at this stage, yeah. But yeah, in, I think result, um, why we're doing it pretty much is because we feel like people are happier and more productive. This is really the outcome that we, that we see. And the, old, the whole journey is not that easy. Right. It takes a lot of investment from everybody to actually get into flexible models. And I, I don't know, late, probably you're going to ask about it, but what are these models and how do they look in practice? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the first thing I'll comment on this is that, you know, we've seen a lot of companies do um, over the last few months what we would call flex washing, you know, like green washing, but pretending to be flexible, um, saying, oh, you can work from anywhere or whatever. And then in practicality, they are imposing very strict guidelines. Uh, in terms of when to come to the office and how to, you know, if we're talking about work location as one attribute of flexibility. Um, I think what's really remarkable about the approach that Spotify has taken is also that you connect it very strongly to that purpose of unleashing creativity. Um, and, I, and, and both, you know, towards your musicians and your, and your content creators, but also towards your employees, that feels like a very strong motivator to say creativity happens in different setups for different people, um, people need different inspirations. Some will find it by coming to the office and chatting with a colleague, and some will find it by going to some retreat in the mountain somewhere. And we're open to creating that space. And you were saying that uh, the outcome for you guys is that you truly see an impact on your business. Can you talk a little bit more? Because otherwise, if you're just providing flexibility because everybody says you need to do that in the news, then really it won't be sustained. I'd really love to get your thoughts on that. Right. Um... So flexibility, we also realize when we have new people joining, um, some are, yes, you have these flexible working models. What are they? They're very curious about it. And um, but also we have a lot of people, especially leaders that are being afraid. They are concerned about it. They say like, OK, if my team is not where I am, I, how are we going to work together? And these are really foundational questions that um, we, we also allow leaders themselves, if they then join, to figure out themselves. So within that flexibility is also a lot of room for improvement. And I can give you um, a few examples. Um, we are a tech company. So we also, we, we are at the head of the game when it comes to using tools and technology. This can also come with a downside of a lot of noise. Um, one example, like my dad, for example, he, he had like two suitcases to come home from work many years ago because um, if you go home, usually you don't continue to work, right? So he like brought paperwork home and worked. And I remember then when we had the first fax machine, um, I couldn't sleep at night because uh, he said, we're getting a fax from Japan. And like, this is just, and this is crazy, right? So I'm like, this is like, was for me the first example when, when work outside the regular work times reached us, right? So we are a global company and the noise is there. There is emails coming all the time in and out. Um, and uh, that flexibility that people feel like, oh, they need to be on the emails all the time, especially new starters, but this is really not the case. You decide when you work. This also encourages people to develop a very good discipline for themselves, manage their work-life balance at a larger scale. We're not saying it's easy, but it, 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 it unlocks so much in, in people talking also about like the time that they carve out for themselves, school runs, whatever it is. And talk about this. I can't, I take a school run. And it leads to a lot of acceptance that life is there. Because if you think about it, when we talk about work every day, uh, meetings, etc., cetera, um, the life is still happening outside of the work, right? And it matters to us a lot. So we see that. So it's, it's more of a journey that people also take on when it comes to flexibility and then kind of really um, embracing the flexibility that they have in there. Um, I, I refer to technology. So it's about the tools that we have. Um, mm. We use Slack, for example. We use a lot of other platforms in order to communicate and efficiently. We are working in documents. So it's also we are, we are prioritizing asynchronous work to allow this flexibility so that no one feels pressured, right? 
you need to over communicate on deadlines, but give sufficient times when there are certain deliverables to be expected. But then you allow the team members and people to tune into that work and lean in when they feel there's the right time. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like actually to explore. I feel like I, I know quite a bit because I, I, I go to your blog and I read everything you guys post on that front. Um, but what are the different types of flexibility? So we've talked about work location. And my understanding on that one is that um, every year employees are given a choice and they can change their opinion uh, from one year to the next in terms of being office first, you know, remote first or, you know, a mix of both. Um, and that allows you to also plan at scale, you know, your office capacities and things like that. So that's one form of flexibility that you guys have provided. What are the others that you would cite? Right. So I'll, I'll explain these models quickly. Um, and um, so it's like we call it one is the office mix. The other one is the home mix, like which is your, your more prefer preferred solution. And part of that could also mean like, look, um, I want to work from a different location. I want to relocate to a different country because of whatever personal reasons you have or uh, and therefore we'll try to enable these things. Um, so uh, there's a few guidelines, guiding principles around like try to be in the same, same time zone if your team is in the in a certain time zone you just need to like accommodate so that you can collaborate with them at least most of mostly in the same time zone um but this also leads then to a lot of change in the workplaces that we are building in terms of offices um in dubai our office we started off with a uh, two desks then we went to four now there's a lot um and um we are we are um, not creating many more as we grow very fast. We're not putting many more workstations in there. We're just building more collaborative spaces because I think it's something that we all learned is that you don't need to be in an office to work on emails and contracts. However, we have employees that decide, no, I want to do that. Um, we have engineers that say, I want to be at home at all times. We have engineers that say, no, I want to be in an office so that I switch off. And that is everything is perfectly fine. Um, so we cater for this. It's our responsibility, but also in the offices, we have, we have more collaborative spaces. Now, what we realized also when we asked people, please make a decision, um, it created ripple effects. So you had teams saying, OK, what do my, does my other team members decide? Do they now work more from home? Um, and then they, they think immediately about collaboration. How do we continue like high levels of belonging and collaboration and uh, efficiency and output moving forward? And um, there was a lot of chatter. I just shared this experience with you. There was a lot of chatter and then within one team, within each team, and then each team talked to the other team, et cetera. And then they asked me what they should do. And it's like, it's just not, you know, we, we quickly made the decision, just try what you think is right. As long as you prioritize really collaboration um, and, and well-being, literally also for the, for your colleagues, for team members, because we're here for each other. And so we said, like, also, if you decide on the home mix, still the office is there for you. Want to work from there? Just come in. So and also we encourage people to try the different ways. We also see downsides as people that go into home mix and they, they struggle with mental health. They feel disconnected, feel not involved enough because it also takes a lot to then stay engaged, be active, be on the on the more digital platforms in order to stay with the team. So what I'm saying here is that. Flexibility is not just a, a trashy term for us. It's something that we want everybody to try out, to experience. And this goes to one of our, core, our five core values, which is to really innovate. We want people to innovate um, the way they work um, and the way that we work literally on a, on, on a very frequent basis. Yeah. yeah, and I think, as you mentioned, there is no one answer fits all. Um, flexibility is about providing optionality and then hoping, you know, treating your employees like adults who can make good decisions for themselves, for their teams. And then, as you say, sometimes helping them to manage the downside. I think uh, you guys have a wellness week coming up. Um, I know you're very vocal about uh, that balance for everybody in your uh, in your organization. Um, and I think there's a lot of that care that I see in, in how to treat people and how to make sure that, um, you know, they can bring their full selves to work, but they're also helping, you know, being helped to manage the downsides of flexibility. There is there is always um, some comfort in no flexibility, you know. Um, to, I, I do appreciate the opposite view, which is sometimes just being told what to do is just easiest for everybody. Flexibility creates a lot of overhead and having to, to manage all of these different questions of focus time and brainstorming and team connection and human connection. And actually, I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about 
how you maintain human connection in this kind of environment. Do you have any rituals in place? Uh, how does your team kind of come together and, and how do you keep them connected to each other? Yeah. As I said before, it's, 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 it's really an evolution. And this evolution takes, takes place on a, on a global company level where we're doing a tune-in service, which is kind of like employee engagement, satisfaction, et cetera, results every six months. Um, but there's also many other ways. So we do this on a global level, then we do it on a regional level, but we also very much each team does that um, also on their own level, right? Teams are fine to decide you want to focus Fridays. Um, it's, it's just like an idea that it's not written anywhere in Spotify, but we see many teams doing that or do half of the Friday where your calendar is just blocked out. You just the recap of the week or whatever you feel like just to like tune out um, and therefore you'll be more focused and more engaged throughout the rest of the week. Um, and let's believe this to teams to decide. Um, the other element is really talking about uh, boundaries, uh, setting boundaries and communicating them, communicating them in the right way, but also then be allow also for flexibility there when it is needed. Right? We can't have a boundary say like, don't send me an email after 6 p.m. It's just in our world today and in our business, it simply doesn't work. Right? So it's more like, how do you adjust to what's the fact that there's emails coming in at very different times? Right. Um, and um, uh, overall, to stay connected, coming to your question, um, is also an evolution. So it's also the learnings that people will have to go through. Sometimes people feel like they're not involved enough. They're not connected enough. Right. So and it's up to the manager to to be there as a guide and as a helping hand, but also for the employee to step up. Like, what can I do? Right. Because nobody feels to ex ex feels, wants to be excluded. And there is. There's some FOMO that's sometimes being created if those people that are in an office after work, they go out and, uh, I don't know, have a casual chat um, in a, at another venue. Um, and then people that are not in the office, they're not part of that. But also we need to shape that awareness also amongst the employees. So like, hey, by the way, we're heading out. Maybe you can join us the next time. So always think absolutely inclusively. The belonging part is not something that the company just puts on the people. It's something that everybody needs to needs to live and breathe, literally at all times. And um, this is not a learning that just is an easy one. I want to really say for employees, it can take, and I include myself in that. The pandemic has accelerated things for us in that regard very much, and there were like things that were really difficult. Um, but it can take one to two years for people to like go into this, and also like. You know, it's, there's also constant change because sometimes projects demand that people grinding more together and just use flip charts together, like behind yeah. me. Um, yeah. And then you don't want people to and say like, not ask each other, can you please come to the office or makes it easier? No, ideally somebody says, let me come to the office so we do it. Um, yeah. But again, this is uh, this is it. Uh, sorry, your question was also how we stay connected. Again, it's it's through technology, but also through the social connections. Um, you mm -hmm. mentioned when I think we started for the first time last year. It is truly magical because, you know, this is the time where there is no emails. <laughs> I refer to that. They might come in at the night uh, where it's really down and really people can focus to switch off and don't fear. OK, I'm missing out or there's stuff happening that I'm not aware of. Um, but there's a lot of other things that we do um, on the on the social front, give people the opportunity to connect. There's a lot of tools that we use to virtually connect. Um, it's it's been from my point of view not a replacement uh, versus like bringing people together in person right this is why we are we currently thinking also about like offsites are coming back are we sending mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of people across the world to go to offsites um and uh, it's a it's a tricky line to walk also from a sustainability and uh, environmental point of view um, but the, the human connection uh, requires also that we have the connection at least like if there's teams really very much abroad they need to meet once or twice a year in person this connection there's a there's a magic in that that um that's that really supports the output in the end yeah absolutely yesterday we had uh, chase warrington from doist who's a fully remote company always has been talking to us actually about offsites and you know fully remote organizations always dedicate a big chunk of their budget to actually bringing people together in in real I don't want to say in real life, let's say away from the keyboard, because <laughs> it's still real life the rest of the year. Um, and I also I really appreciate your point in saying, you know, the burden isn't just on management, the burden is on every individual 
to be reflective um, and to think about how they're bringing themselves and how they're engaging with others. Um, you know, a, a, a question I, I love to kind of sometimes start some sessions with when I'm working with leaders or teams on employee engagement. Um, and I say, like, whose job is it to keep you engaged right now, mine or yours? And I think it's always everybody's job um, to yeah. contribute. And so I love that you're putting responsibility back on every single individual. I think that's how, that's what it means to treat people like adults, is that they get the plus side. They also get to be responsible for managing it. And I think also you've mentioned your values quite a couple of times. And I love that. I love people who, you know, in organizations where you're always bringing up your values because it means they're really core to to how you guys behave every day. You have a band manifesto that documents these um, and clearly they're alive in the way that you um, that you operate on a daily basis. Um, tell us more about how being you know, purpose-driven and very connected to your values has shaped uh, the employee experience and the way that people engage with each other. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. I uh, also wanna like add to what you just said. It's about when you put the responsibility of engagement, collaboration on literally everybody, you drive for empathy, you drive for being connected. Um, you, you also um, uh, enable that people are more transparent with their work and the questions they have, right? Did you receive this or like over communicating of what's going on um, up and down and left and right. So um, there is a lot of positive and great benefits in this um, if, if it's done right, but it's like a muzzle that needs to be trained. So yeah, and our values, and they're, they're truly our guiding principles for us, and but also very much for our partners. We openly speak about them, and I encourage everybody to look them up. Um, I feel they're really strong, and uh, so we wrote this band manifesto, and we feel across Richard Lake, all our, across all our regions and offices, we think of ourselves as a band, right? Like a band, we're dependent on each other. We, just one person can't do what we're doing, right? And uh, um, together we create the best audio experience. That's what a band does as well. And like a band, we need to be in sync, right? And when we when we prioritize um, asynchronous working, the, the the need to go into sync more frequently um, is just so very important. And so it's, a, it's, it's kind of the trade between the flexibility uh, where we need to be more to sync each other with each other. Um, and like successful band, uh, we have a set of rules. Um, and this is our band manifesto. It keeps us focused uh, on where we want to go and guides us on, on how to get there. Um, and I want to, now with Work From Anywhere, it, it's it's when it really kicked in, we had new people coming to Dubai to our office. And uh, not everybody was aware. And then you get somebody new walking through the door. Hey, who are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm a new person from <laughs> another office. Welcome to Spotify. No, I work at Spotify since six years. Um, and um, then we integrate those naturally, right? You go for a Fika is what we do as a Swedish company. Yeah. It's literally a, a catch up where you go for lunch. And it is it is amazing because the culture is exactly is absolutely identical. Um, also, we relocate the teams uh, due to current situations uh, in Europe and to different offices, etc. And we had like complete teams coming together for a gathering. And uh, some people were in tears by realizing is you have the same ideas, you're just going have the similar approach about these things. And this is this culture is so strong that people cry me myself, I have to admit it, it's just wonderful to see. So um, it's it's really that the spirit of our people across all our offices is pretty much pretty much in sync. Yeah. So that's that's the result of our band manifesto. That's absolutely magical. And when you manage to to create that for an organization, I know that it can move mountains. Um, one of your values, you know, talked about uh, to us about innovation. Another one is controlled chaos, which I think is a is a really great term. Um, it definitely stands out. You know, it's it's rare to see companies uh, put something like that as one of their values, and I really appreciate it in today's world. Right. Uh, also, yeah. I think it refers to creativity and other aspects of what you guys do. Um, tell us about this value. It really stood out to us when we were reading the manifesto. How does it help? you scale how do you balance you know the chaos that inspires innovation and creativity but still you know being able to to all make progress and grow right so there's many nuances here in the controlled chaos uh, and uh, it, it if, if we bring this up to new starters they think like oh my god this sounds really scary really really scary um but literally it drives a lot of innovation and and room for people to drive change 
um, in, in all ways, not just for the teams, but for the product, um, for how we work together. Um, so the chaos um, that we find ourselves in uh, quite often um, leads us to challenge. And there's a lot of change that we constantly do um, and in, in order to try new things, right? And we acknowledge that nothing has to be perfect. Also, part of that, another nuance is that we don't take ourselves too serious about it, right? We're not uh, financial in institutions, or I don't want to make any weird comparisons, but like um, it's about let's try something crazy, right? And this is really part of of that um, uh, chaos. So because you can bring you you, you start with something completely crazy. And then you bring some sort of control in there. And we also have like, we do, we work on the OKR models, for example, um, to, to help us guide and go through things and track the results. Right? We're obsessed with data, right? There's billions of data points, points being created on Spotify and uh, on, a, on a daily basis. And um, therefore we make really a lot of evidence-based decisions. But on the other hand, we also uh, take in hypothesis and say, we're gonna try that, but then we track it. So there's a lot of, when you see Spotify today, there's probably been 100 times more different versions of features being out there that were tested, but they didn't make it in the final product, right? And this is, this is really why Spotify is the most sticky um, user music streaming service um, in the world today. Yeah, I mean, I remember reading about how you ship out features and how you use them in controlled groups. And and I think that that agility and that flexibility are one and the same, right? Like by having a flexible organization, flexibility around the ways of working, flexibility in, in testing things out and trying them and see what works in shipping a feature to 50,000 users and then finding out whether it improves their experience or not. There's some, they somehow feel one and the same. It's like an organic being and all of it is trying things out and experimenting. And what's really incredible is, is your ability to maintain what is usually like a startup feel. Um, but then as companies grow, they start to slow down. We don't want to make any comparisons, but we can talk about other tech companies that where their employees are starting to feel that pain of saying like, oh, but it's not what it used to be. Now we have to go through seven layers of bureaucracy, you know. Yeah. All of that, whereas for you, it is really like a competitive advantage as an organization to be able to continue uh, iterating and experimenting at scale. At least that's, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm a fan girl. So from outside, that's what it looks like. I want to make an example to what you just said, um, yeah. is that in the tech world, you do a lot of A-B testing, as you said, right? We try this feature, do a cohort. How does it work there? Then we also do market research. Uh, we gather a lot of data that's not just owned by us, right? That that we like gather in on of, of markets and, and tech and infrastructure, etc. Cetera, et cetera. Um, um, but there's so much that you know. But then when we Spotify was built on algorithms, those personalization, the discovery of music. Um, therefore, we have now 433 million active users on Spotify, but it's literally 433 million different versions of Spotify because it's each one is unique. And it started with algorithms. Today almost anything on Spotify is not really on algorithms, it's on machine learning. And what machine learning does, it assumes different chaos scenarios. So it does the A-B testing literally on its own. It tries different hypotheses on its own and wants to be proven right or wrong. Um, and uh, th this is just, so, so the machine learning concept really is what we also want to have in our people very much, right? that we allow them to think really outside of those boxes that literally each human, it's a human thing. We always try to be in the comfort zone and in our box and just have <laughs> our brain. But you know, machine learning really unleashes that and breaks out of this continuously. And that's what we also inspire in our people. Yeah, and uh, I see one of your people here, Rhea, saying uh, she loves working in controlled chaos. It leaves room for creativity and playfulness. So we're getting an endorsement over here. A couple of right. questions from the audience before um, you know I take you to more questions that I have. Um, someone's asking us here, Marie's asking, how did flexible work change your leadership style? Oh, very much. If I, if I may say from my side, um, Again, it's 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 a journey um, as well, and I want to refer to all the things that I mentioned. Um, it's um, there, there's there's a bunch of nuances there. In Spotify, we're all very passionate. It's another value of ours is really being passionate. And uh, 
I think this is an easier one of the easiest values for us because we're all here in this band. We saw um, so so on fire for our mission. Um, but you know that also can come to that people are you know just spend so much time on work and there's so much in it and that uh, work life balance sometimes can get out of out of track. And with the flexibility of work, um, we are sometimes our passion becomes even too much. Um, about just like delivering results, but the results are also there in like being there for your colleagues, being there, for stepping up for the team, having empathy for your lead, for your for your manager, and for the top leadership, and vice versa um, to your to your reports. Um, so, and I think this is this is a learning there that all these nuances and factors um, require a different management style very much, right? We also have a uh, manager manifesto in Spotify. I'm not sure if it's public, but um, you can you can try it. I don't know if it's out there. Um, but um, uh, this is really here um, to guide us also on certain principles on, um, yes, being an inspiring leader, but at the same time, have a lot of empathy, right? And encourage people. It's like how we're driving growth in people um with taking into account the the flexibilities right we encourage people and i have an example of somebody that has really worked for five different completely functions. it included hr and finance and marketing um over the last many years at spotify um this is also part of flexibility um and but it needs the manager to say okay i'm losing maybe a great employee but we're uh, that person will make a next greater contribution uh, in the in the wider spotify um, organization and therefore we let him go and we need to onboard something new so yeah I think it has changed my leadership style very much um, but also I want to tell my don't fool myself this is a, this is an ongoing journey um, especially when we're working with so many diverse people um, we're one of the most diverse offices when it comes to the cultural background um, and, and skill sets here in Dubai um, and that also requires uh, yeah I want to say um, a lot of openness uh, and a lot of uh, long-term vision, yeah. Yeah, but very good. Question. Actually, you're leading me beautifully uh, to my topic, you, uh, because part of that scale, of course, is not just how many people are part of the organization, but the diversity. I mean, you you guys are truly a global organization, both in terms of kids that you serve and where you hire people from, and the culture um, of of those who join you on this adventure. Um, how much of you know of your your core values, your culture, the way you operate is shared versus how much space do you leave for localizing and and having maybe some different approaches to work or anything else that might be more relevant? For example, in this region, um, you know, we see that there's a. I mean, I've studied different organizations, for example, in Dubai, and I always say this that. Contrary to other countries, there is actually much more demand from employees to be in the office, let's say, than you would find in the U.S. over here. Uh, for many, many different reasons, we can explore that, but it, we're not like as much aligned with global trends as one would think. And we're much more diverse. We have people from the East, from the West, from all over the place. As you said, it's very complex uh, to manage and understand the various cultures. So how much flexibility do you leave to your local um, representation to sort of make decisions about flexible work models or otherwise that may be more fitting for the local culture? Look, in the end, it's all about output and performance also, right? And and uh, this is literally why we're setting our, why we have our values and guiding principles to lead, to generate the maximum of value and follow our mission. Um, and uh, I think there's a lot of room there. So if we see certain levels of performance going down or connectivity isn't there, collaboration goes down, um, then uh, we need to change, clearly, right? So there's a lot of freedom there. And I feel also our values are um, are very, very clear, but also broad, right? And what you, what you make of that um, as, a, as a leader for each team or what each squad makes out of it. And there's there's different operating models in the execution, as long as the output is on a on a great level, right? Um, but yeah, there's there's some things that we see here. I'm, I'm, I think we're blessed that um, when we reopened the office, not many people wanted to come because they got accommodated at home, right? And uh, very well, and uh, or some people move further away from the office, so they don't want to take the commute. Um, and if I may compare ourselves here in Dubai to other offices. Um, we are actually doing really well. People come, um, yeah. some come once a week, some come twice a week. I come four times a week. 
and um, sometimes I don't come at all in a week and it's it's perfectly fine. It just depends on what's just happening at the moment. Um, and uh, in other offices, yes, it's true. In other of some other offices, there's less people coming to the office. But what's important is the output, and you can you can track that. You can sense that um, through yeah through many ways. Um, and uh, yeah, I think this. Yeah, that's an incredible point. I mean, there's in the in the kind of uh, flexible or remote work community, one of the biggest discussions with leaders who are hesitant about this is actually measuring performance not presenteeism the good news with spotify is because you're a tech company and you as you say you generate billions of data points every day you have the ability to very clearly say whether you know we're making progress or not and based on that to adapt and, and adjust so i think that's um that's kudos to you for being able to leverage the data but also you're lucky to be able to have access to you know very yeah. transparent performance data off the bat, right? Right. I, um, I wish it was that easy. Sorry, Marilyn. I have to say we we not. also need to we need to track the performance on how we are doing as people, really. Um, and so mm -hmm. it's like the business output, right? What products and features we're shipping, etc. What campaigns we're we're implementing, and and looking at metrics in the market that they uh, and, and those results. But it's also how we do as people. So and I think this needs to be an equal factor. Um, when it comes to assessing ourselves, um, doing performance reviews with people, um, that, that is like how we are embracing our band manifesto really matters. And in that sense, also, we, we believe that each employee is also a leader because they lead us to make sure that the band manifesto is brought forward um, mm. and that, that the, the people around them are thriving. Um, so, yeah, and it, it's, there is some hard data, but also a lot of data is just very soft. Um, and uh, but that's just just the the, the reality, and the nature. Of but this. actually, I'd, I'd love to hear more about this. So, how do you measure that? Is it like employee engagement pulse surveys? Is it discussions? Is it just each manager kind of gets a sense of their team? Do you have a a clear way of gathering this information? Again, with a lot of flexibility, there is a few things that are have become common practice. So we do our mm -hmm. one on ones, and the one on ones we prioritize first of all the. The check-in um, around well-being, etc., right? Because these it doesn't need to be a topic in each one-on-one, -on -one, but you know, it's like it should be considered uh, at the first place, right? Talk about boundaries, barriers of execution, um, and so these this is one-on-ones. Then another thing is like twice a year we do a tune-in survey uh, with a bunch of questions, uh, completely anonymous. Um, and then we have also like hotlines uh, for questions. There's HR specialist. Uh, we have uh, teams for diversity and inclusion. Um, we launched Heart and Soul, which is our program around uh, well-being and mental health, uh, which has been really instrumental. Um, um, and I give you an example. We we had uh, um, it was World Mental Health Day just this week, and we gave every opportunity, every employee, the whole day, the full flexibility to focus on that and we did a programming in each office so we had different things here from yoga to meditation sound healing that was that was great i love that um, massage and all different kinds of things but then also there's sessions that we as managers can facilitate in a learning and development program to talk about mental health and if you i've done this uh, with with my team a few times and you look at, at the different potential mental health issues that you have you as a manager go forward and say like, okay, I had an issue here, here, here. And I put it all on the flip, actually that very flip chart here. And I realized, well, out of, I don't know how many criteria it was, let's say 15. I mean, in 13 areas, I had mental health issues, right? So it, it actually like for new starters, it's like, wow, they talk about this. Well, wow, people are opening up, right? This is, this is really essential. And so this helps us a lot. This is another tool of like building a strong connection. Um, and then, then you realize when people speak up about mental health, you can support them better, um, and in the end, it's uh, it, it helps you to assess people, and it helps you to actually like drive the performance up. So there's a lot of a lot of things. There's talent snapshots that we do on a regular basis, um, yeah, and so on. I just give you a yeah, few. Yeah, I mean, I love this stuff. I, these are the things that people come to us for, like uh, in the conversation, is to actually hear about like uh, practical, pragmatic examples of the tools that you know the organization is giving them in order to do this. Um, are there any other uh, aspects of managing this at scale that you that you think are notable or that you want to share or any other tools that you particularly love? Well, 
I think it's it's also important. I mean, guiding principles are key, right? And ideally, you have every employee believing in them. If there's a, a misunderstanding around values, etc., right? So then it is not a fit. That's also an important part. Um, but really, we as leaders, we have to foster an environment where people feel work is not somewhere where you go to, but something that you mm -hmm. do. And I think this is a, this is where a lot of the change starts. What the execution for other companies is like, it's really up to them. You find companies that Google has a different approach. Microsoft actually had a, a approach like this many years ago. Um, I'm not saying it, they, they reduced office space to save rent, um, but it was like it's, it, with Microsoft is very common for many years that people work from home and come to the office once or twice a week, right? So um, every company has a, has a very different, and there's a lot of companies that just like send the people back to work. Ah, that's an important one, right? is you build the trust and you you if, if somebody withdraws through the fact that they now can work from home all the time um you you feel this you get it right and then if there's yeah. a trust connection um then you can also like repair and improve the situation and drive the collaboration forward but it it requires a lot of trust this is why leaders struggle i struggled with with that in the beginning with this with this big change and i think it's natural so um, yeah, building trust and fostering really a safe environment there is is key when you when you are trying to implement more flexible models. Yeah. Thank you for that. I'll take one last question from the audience, and then I'll take us to our rapid fire question. Um, Peter asks us, how do you promote innovation and intrapreneurship in distributed settings? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, I think I'm not. I probably I don't know much about too much about R and D but we celebrate a lot of the success that, that is being shipped on the products and the features that are being shipped and the recognition of when people uh, de develop something and come up with an idea, et cetera, is quite important. And we celebrate this through various platforms like, uh, like an internet, there's like uh, Workplace and Slack, et cetera, so an email. So we use these, these type of platforms. Um, and um, I think that recognition is, is really a, to celebrate this properly is really how we pay the reward. But then also there is, uh, um, it, this all goes in when people said um, on an, uh, on a, twice a year, we do like a development talk where you work on a development plan is not mandatory, but most people actually do it. So they think how they can grow and learn and move forward and, and, and uh, um, in, in line with the company objectives, right? And then the success becomes tangible and becomes right there. And this is also important that the clarity with the manager is there. So I always suggest and recommend doing this. Um, and uh, then the success will come and the rewards and recognition will come on its own if they're, if they're visible. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And thanks for everything you've shared. I mean, I've learned a lot, uh, even as a fangirl, there's so much more for me to uncover. And we've also posted the links to the band manifesto that includes part of the manager's manifesto. I don't know if it's all of it or some of it um, in our in our chat here. So for those of you who want to check it out, you can go ahead and join that link. And with that, Claudius, we are coming to our rapid fire question. So are you ready for those? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to give you four statements and I want to finish. I want you to finish the statement that I start. So the first one is a great employee experience is essential for sustainable high performance. I love that. Yes. 2,000 times, yes. The book every leader should read today. Um, Sapiens um, from Juva yeah. uh, <laughs> Noah Harari, right? There's, yes. there's so many great <laughs> business books right. out there written by CEOs, but I think this one is really, really, really essential to understand human, human background and connectivity. Couldn't agree more, honestly. It's one of my all-time favorite books. And maybe I'll uh, join a recommendation uh, to yours, uh, a book that's very similar in how it's written and the storytelling, but also the academic and anthropological research is a book called Humankind, uh, which seeks to prove that humans, uh, human beings are actually very kind beings. Um, and it's, it's such a beautifully written book as well. So on top of Sapiens, that's my other you know favorite right. recommendation. The next one is the ideal workplace is Anywhere you want it to be. In true Spotify fashion. Uh, the secret ingredient to a great employee experience is? Having fun. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. Because so there's much a lot of that. ingredients, right? But uh, this, the fun mm -hmm. part is uh, sometimes coming too short. 
Yeah, yeah, we all forget it. I'm the first one. I'm super guilty of that. I, I ask my team to remind me to stop being so serious all the time. <laughs> so uh, I know, I know. Uh, I, I, I've gotten much better. I used to be like a very much like a, you know, an A student and I, I finish one exam and I'm off to the next, but I've gotten much better at stopping to celebrate. Um, in fact, one of our rituals, which I'm hoping we are going to do together as a team tomorrow is that we eat ice cream or whatever snack you like uh, to celebrate, you know, positive news. So tomorrow we have a t t team time together and hopefully we'll all be having some ice cream. Nice. Um, and with that, Claudius, I really want to thank you again for taking the time to join us. I know it's a very busy season for you, so I'm doubly grateful that, that you made the time for this. This was wonderful, Marilyn. Thank you so much. And um, keep it up and uh, yeah, enjoy, enjoy the podcasts and the music on Spotify. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a big Spotify person, let me tell you. Uh, and of course, as always, you know, with every band playing, uh, the band is important, but the audience is just as important. So I want to thank our audience for having joined uh, me and Claudius today and for all your questions and, and feedback and positive reinforcement in the comments. Um, and one last item from me before we wrap this up. So uh, like I said, we have one more week of our conference. The next session is on Monday at 9.30 a.m. Dubai time. So start to your week. If you happen to be late to work and you're driving somewhere, you can tune in. Um, we're actually going to be having a really interesting talk with Dr. Agustin Chavez. He's an architect and academic, and he wanted to test a theory that sometimes it's better to incubate an idea in isolation. So not in collaboration, but in isolation. And so he walked from Sydney, from Melbourne to Sydney on his own, he did a little pilgrimage to incubate an idea about workplace design, which is a very unique thing. And he wrote a book about it. So he's going to join us on Monday to talk about what he learned during those 42 days. Um, and then as always, the team at Cosmic Centers is very busy working in the background to make all of this happen. So, you know, make our day, go to our website, sign up to our newsletter, um, and let us know that you enjoy the content that we create. Thanks again, everybody signing us out.